Hello everybody, it's Professor Fiore, and in this video we're going to be looking at a simple way of tailoring the frequency response of your op amp circuits. Like this one, a simple non-inverting series parallel arrangement amplifier. So we know the gain for this is RF, 9K, over RI, 1K, plus 1. All right, so that's going to be a gain of 9K over 1K, 9 plus 1, 10. We have 100 millivolts coming in times 10. We should be looking at a 1 volt peak output. All right, let's do a real quick transient analysis on this just to make sure that it's looking good. All right, so our input is the green. Here's our little 100 millivolts. We can see the output. We're getting um, one volt peak, basically. It's two volts peak to peak with a small DC offset, which is to be expected, but looking good. All right. Now, what about the frequency response of this? All right. So the frequency response, we'll just do a little Bode plot. The uh, TL071 is uh, around a three and a half ish megahertz device. So we would expect the upper break frequency, the F2, to be, you know, about that value divided by the noise gain, which is the signal gain in this case of 10. So, you know, 300, 320, 350 kilohertz, something like that would, would be uh, typical. All right, let's see what we get. All right, so first we should have a gain of, of 20 dB, right? Our gain of ordinary gain of 10 works out to 20 dB. That's exactly what we're getting over here. All right, I'll put this over in the middle so we can see it a little better. All right, so there's our 20. So I want to go down um, to the F2, which would be 3 dB down from that, or 17. Wump, 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 there we go. So we're looking at just a little over 300 in that case. All right, 300 kilohertz. So that, that seems to be fine. On the low frequency end, right, there is no lower frequency limit because it's DC coupled, right? Okay, this all looks fine, great, dandy, right? Nothing really surprising here. Okay, suppose we find that, you know, that upper break frequency, 300 kilohertz, is a little bit too high. Maybe we're getting some noise in, you know, the 200 kilohertz range or, you know, at 50 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz or something like that. Is there a way we can... Uh, reduce the gain in those areas. Now, granted, we could make a proper filter to precisely ta tailor the frequency response of the system, but I'm just looking for a, a very sort of quick and easy, low-cost kind of thing that we might do, right? And the same thing would be true on the bottom end. Maybe we're having some, some issues with some infrasonics or low-frequency content. I really don't need this thing to go all the way back down to zero hertz to DC, I want to get rid of some of the low frequency. Is there a way of doing it? And the answer is, uh, yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing the video, right? Okay, so the first thing is, I want to look at RF and see if there's a way I can decrease RF as the frequency goes up. Because, you know, think about it for a sec. I want an impedance that drops as the frequency goes up. Well, that's a capacitor. So if I could put a capacitor across RF, we're pretty much home, right? So I've got this cap, I just imaginatively called C1 here, and I've set it to 10 nanofarads. Here's what's going to happen. In the sort of middle-low frequency range, X sub C for this is going to be much, much, much higher than 9K. So the parallel combo is basically going to be 9K. We're going to get the gain of 10 that we always expected. But when we get high enough in frequency, and we can find that critical frequency through our critical frequency formula, 1 over 2 pi RC, right, where R is the RF of 9K and C is the C1 of 10 nanofarads. When we get up to there, this capacitor is starting to short out RF. The end result is the effective value of RF has decreased, and consequently the gain of the system will, has, will have decreased. So if you punch this into your calculator, right, put those numbers in your calculator, the 9K, the, the 10 nanofarad, you're going to get a little bit less than 1.8 kilohertz for a critical frequency. All right. 
So instead of going out to 300 kilohertz like we did before, this thing is going to go out to, you know, 1.8 kilohertz and start to drop off. And as we go up in frequency, X sub C gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and the gain keeps dropping. But it's not a true lag network. It's not going to just keep falling and falling and falling and falling, you know, forever. In fact, the smallest X sub C1 can be is zero ohms. And at that point, the gain is not zero. The gain is actually one because you will have shorted out RF. But your gain is RF over RI plus one. So the end result is you get zero plus one, you get a gain of one. So the, the system response is going to fall until you get to a gain of zero dB or unity, and then it's going to level out until it hits its ordinary roll off, if you will, and then will continue to roll off the way of, you know, the way it would have as it didn't have the capacitor. Okay. How do I figure out, you know, that point of inflection? Well, you know, on a piece of graph paper, it's easy enough to just extend the line until you hit zero. And there's your approximation, right? A basic Bode approximation. But you can calculate it by just using this formula again and having C1 react against Ri this time. This will give you a pretty good idea of, it's not, not going to be perfect, but it's going to give you a very close idea of where that point will be, where that curve inflects back to zero, all right? Okay, so let us do a Bode plot on this and see what we get. All right, so there's the stepped response I'm talking about. First of all, let's go check that we have our gain of 20 dB. All right, 19.9999999999, so that's 20. So we want to find the 3 dB down point, which would be 17, which is you know, basically right there. So there's 1.757 kilohertz. As I was saying, we were expecting a little bit less than uh, 1.8 kilohertz. So that's beautiful. Now, when we plug in the 1K with the 10 nanofarad, that's going to work out to about 16 kilohertz. Uh, again, that's just our sort of rule of thumb. So I want to go and find 3 dB up from the flat, right? The flat bit over here, which is zero, ideally 0 dB. So I want to come up to 3 dB which is right around there. And we're looking at a smidge over 17 kilohertz. All right. Okie dokie. That looks good. Let's do a quick comparison with our first circuit that didn't have the added feedback capacitor. All right. You see what's happening here? I'm just going to switch back and forth between these two things. All right. So this part, this low frequency part and this high frequency part are not changing. What you're really doing is sort of chopping out this section right in here. All right. Well, if that's where your interference frequencies, your noise or whatever it is, happen to be, well, that works out pretty well. And it only costs you one small capacitor. Now, if you want to do something a little bit more sophisticated, right, you would build an appropriate active filter and you could very tightly control this, have really good attenuation in the out of band region. But like I said, this is a simple inexpensive, easy way to do something, and it may be sufficient. And if it's, if it is great. Okay. No reason to go, uh, you know, crazy with these things. All right. What about the low frequency end? Well, to get onto the low frequency end, we're going to shift our focus over to RI because the other way of looking at the gain equation, one plus RF over RI is to make RI infinity instead of making RF zero. And that'll do the same kind of thing. It'll drop your gain down to unity, down to zero dB. But at low frequencies, if I put a capacitor in series with RI, right? So now what happens is at the low frequencies, this opens up, RI gets huge, and bingo, the gain drops off, all right? So again, we will calculate this frequency, Ri and, and Ci, all right? Plug them in, into our formula over here. So a 1K with 100 nanofarad is going to give us about a, a 1.6 kilohertz break frequency. And the same thing as last time. You want to see where it inflects back around zero. Use RF this time, 9K with 100 nanofarad, and you're going to get about a 170, 180 hertz out of that. 
So let's do that Bodhi plot and see what we get. Womp. All righty. So here's our 20 dB way up top. We still have the high frequency roll off that we originally had. All right. So there's our gain of 20. I want to find 17 right around there. So, okay, 1.592, so 1 1.6 kilohertz as expected. And then we're looking for like 170, 180 down here. So here's our zero. I want to come up 3 dB right around there. And we are at 162. So that's, again, pretty close. Like I said, that is just an approximation that we're going to use on this point. So if this was a true lead network, this would have continued to roll off. All right. But again, if you want that, go build a proper filter. Let's compare this against our original circuit. All right. So you can see what's happening. The way it just sort of takes a big bite out of that low frequency response. All right. So if we have some noise or interference down here, you know, we can reduce it by upwards of 20 dB in this case. Now you can understand why this works really well with amplifiers that have a higher gain. Really low gain, you know, there's not much of a bite to take out. You know, if you only have a gain of 2, voltage gain of 2, your, your uh, dB value is 6 dB. It'd be like out here. So there isn't a huge, huge loss that you're going to see. Um, it's there, but it's not, it's not going to be that, that uh, dramatic. All right. So bottom line, all it takes is one capacitor. We can either put it in series with our eye to affect the low frequency response, or we can put it across RF to affect the high frequency response, right? So this is just a matter of reducing the high frequencies or reducing the low frequencies, right? All it takes is one cap. Oh yeah, you can use both if you want to narrow the thing up. Okay, beautiful, simple, inexpensive, easy fix. There you go. Any questions, put them in the comments. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.